All right, here's a brief overview of the law of signs, which we did in class uh, the other day. Uh, law of signs, we want to start with just by looking at, well, first, what we have been doing. We've been dealing with right triangles all this time, and it was real simple because we could say sine of C is just opposite over hypotenuse, 6 over 10. However, we don't have right triangles all the time. It's the real world. We're not always that lucky. So in this case, how do we solve problems where we don't have right triangles? Well, the way we're going to do that is with something called the law of signs. And this is what it is. All the law of signs states is that we're going to take the angle, the sine of the angle, and then divide it by the side directly opposite of it. So A and side A, which are directly opposite of each other. We have a proportion that we can set up for all three sides of the triangle. So remember, big letters are angles, small letters are the sides in this case. All right, let's use it. Let's see what we can do. First problem, we want to find the value of A. Well, start with exactly what do we know? We want to find A, parts that we do know. We know what angle A is, so I can find sine of A. We know what angle B is, so I can find sine of B. And I know side B as well. Because of this, I have a nice proportion I can set up. I only need two out of the three full parts to make it work. So plug in what I know. Sine of A is sine of 75 divided by, we don't know what side A is. Sine of B is sine of 50 degrees, and then side B is 8. From here, we have a proportion. We need to cross-multiply here. So I'm going to have A times sine 50 is going to equal 8 times sine of 75. To get A by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by sine of 50, divide by sine of 50. Those go away, and I'm left with A equals and this is what you would plug into your calculator. 8 times sine 75, close your parentheses, then divide by 50 degrees. And I should get an answer of about 10.1, uh, thereabouts, depending on where you round. Just like that. Let's take a look at another one. We want to find the value of angle S in this problem. Now, we're not always going to have A, B, and C. In this case, we have U, H, and S. So I would suggest it's going right away, changing if you're going to use it like this, change everything to, in this case, U, H, and S. And then look and say, okay, what do I know? What do I need to find out still? Well, again, I want to find S, so I'm going to need to use this part right here. Um, what else do I know for sure? I want to find S. I need to know, well, I do know, I should say. I know side S. I know side H. And I know angle H. So again, I have a nice proportion. See if you can set that up. I would ask you to pause the video, see if you can set it up, and see how you solve it. All right, hopefully you did all right with this. You should have gotten, when you plugged in, should be sine of 80 over 9 is going to equal sine of S over 7. You're going to cross multiply, and you should end up getting that sine S times 9 equals 7 times sine 80. Divide both sides by 9, you get sine of s equals 7 sine 80 divided by 9. When you plug that in, you should get sine of s equals 0.76 something. Doesn't exactly thrill me too much. Well, that's because we didn't find angle s, we only found sine of s. To change that, to be able to get s by itself instead of sine of s, this is where we need to do our inverse sine operation. Take the inverse sine of both sides. That's going to leave us just with S, and then you just plug in what the si inverse sine, second sine of 0.76 is, and you should get about 53 degrees for this one. That's it. Take that back. This one is 50 degrees dead on, or 49.9. Alright, let's look at another example. Alright, in this one, we have triangle SCO, so I'll make the A into an S, make the B into the O, we already have a C. What do we know? What do we need to find out? We want to find the value of, in this case, side C. So let's mark that first. Then I need to, or I have right now, sides S and O. And I also know angle C. What do you notice? We don't have a proportion anywhere. There's no two sets of fractions that I can use here. So because of this, we cannot get a solution yet. Now, remember from geometry, we had uh, different congruence statements. This one would be called side-angle-side, because we have uh, 
two sides and the included angle here. Sine angle side does not work in the law of sine. In a while, we'll talk about the law of cosines where sine angle side will work. But for now, we have to stay away. Take a look at another possible one. This one is angle side angle. Let's see if this one will work. We want to find y. So let's name them x, y, and z. For this one, we want to find side y. We know angles y and z, and we know side x. Again, kind of looks like we don't know very much. Doesn't look like we have a proportion. However, don't forget though, we have two angles in a triangle. That means we can find the third one as well. This third angle is going to be 70 degrees, triangle sum theorem. So that means we do actually know this sine of x, which means we do have a proportion that we can set up. I'll leave the solving of this one uh, up to you but you should get something about, I believe, 6.2, something a little over 6 for your answer for what y equals. But I'll leave the solving of that one up to you. Move forward. Let's look at this triangle, triangle ROS. ROS. I'll let you, uh, again, do the exercise on your own to try to solve for the value of angle S. Um, what you should find out is you should get to sine of S is going to equal like 1.2. And then you're going to take the inverse sine like you did before. Take the inverse sine of both sides. And you should then get S equals what? Well, when you plug it in, you should actually get something like a domain error. Well, that's because sine only can be between negative 1 and 1. So 1.2 is too big. What this means is this triangle we have here can't possibly exist. This is a no solution problem. Um, so sometimes here, the law of sines just doesn't work. So see if you can get to that, but you know here, when you plug it in, we can't have a solution. One final one to look at, triangle P-I-T. Triangle P-I-N-T. Again, pause the video real quick. I'd like you to try this one on your own and see if you can find a good answer and see if you can find what, in this case, the value of angle T is. All right, hopefully you got your answer. Hopefully you got something like this, that angle T is 53.1 degrees. If I were to ask you to solve the triangle, meaning find the other angle, find the other side, you could find the third angle, as we've done many times before. And then from there, you would use the law of signs again to find the last side measurement. But something I want to look at real quick is, these are the points that we are given. We are given the uh, stuff that's in red, the writing in red. This would have been called back in geometry, side, side, angle. You could read it the other way and call it the donkey postulate, but we'll stay away from that. Maybe you remember or maybe you don't, but uh, side, side, angle was not a legal congruence theorem when we did geometry because there was a possibility of getting two different kinds of triangles every time. So let's kind of take a deeper look at how this one looks with side, side, angle. We're kind of going from the ground we're going up at a 30 degree angle. We're going like a 16 foot ladder at that angle. But then we need to get back to the ground and all we have is this 10 foot ladder. Well, it hits the ground over here, that's cool, but this angle up top didn't matter. So really this ladder could swing back and forth however it wanted to. If it was right here, it'd kind of be, you know, really hitting the ground, kind of having to go under the ground. But it looks like over here, it might hit at a second spot. So there it's through the ground, there it's hit the ground again, and look, we kind of have a, another triangle set up over there that looks something like this. So in this case, we actually get two legitimate triangles that would work. Now, how do we find you know, this angle measurement and this angle measurement and this side as a result of all this? Well, we'll talk about that later, but for now, just realize we could have zero solutions, we could have one solution, or we could have two solutions like we have here with triangle PIT because, you know, just like those Pittsburgh sports teams, you never know what you're going to get. That's what the law of science is. Well, there you have it. If you have questions, you know what to do.